Sal, who is self-sustaining, means he provides everything. He does not need anything. Yeah. Like yeah. when he provides oxygen, water, all the sustenance he provides in this world, but he doesn't require them. Yeah. Now imagine if someone say, I'm going to stop all the water from the sky falling down to the earth. I'm going to stop oxygen. I'm going to stop all the sustenance that human beings require to survive. Then you know our state. We'll only have few moments left to survive. Right? Yeah. So therefore, and then he goes, Lam yalid wa lam yurad. So then God himself is refuting the idea that some people saying God has a son. Like right. in a Christian concept. Yeah. So yeah. Allah is refuting here. In the Quran, Allah refuted. Oh, said, okay. do not say I have a father, neither I have a son. So God said, God is unlike anything you see and observe. How can you attribute such a thing to God? Yeah. Anyway, the good question is, why do we need a son? This is a good question, isn't it? Yeah. Why do yeah. we need a son? I don't know. I think to... Uh... To carry on the progeny. Yeah, to show what... Because if like because we are not eternal, how, how how he would live if he if he was human, yeah, maybe I guess. No, I think if you look at rationally, why we need a son is means I will be dying sometimes, and then my son will carry my progeny. Oh, so why do we need a son? Oh, I'm yeah. saying why but, does God sorry, need sorry, sorry. Let me make it. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we need a son. Yeah. yeah. So that our progeny can continue. But God, this question doesn't apply to God. Why? He's always ever living. Ever living doesn't need someone, a representative, to carry on his message because he's not a mortal thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Does this yeah, that Does it make sense? sense? Yeah. Yeah. So on that note, we say there is a clear distinction between the creation and a creator. Now then how that creator created the message or communicated the message? Did creator left us alone to decide by ourselves? Or has he communicated? Or what method can we rationally conclude that which method we can follow yeah so we have few options i can give you either god sent a paper from the sky and we touched and looked it to it or god sent an angel so different creation than us yeah send a communicator or god sent a human being like us who give us show us through example how to do follow godly command yeah. What would be most suitable one? Uh, yeah, I think definitely the, the human. The human, yeah, yeah. Because it would not have any excuse. Because if a human being can do that, yeah. would yeah. have no excuse. You see my point? Mm. So therefore, God chosen the best option to send human being like us to remember or uh, to uh, to connect with God, mm. with godly message, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So. So God sent message to um, all the prophets like Adam, Noah, Abraham. All of the prophets and messenger received the message of God. Why God created the universe. Why God created the human being. Yeah. And the, the, all of them confirmed that God created everyone to test you. So our life is a test. And Quran affirmed this idea. It said... That I have not created mankind or jinn kind other than to worship me. God is saying that. So our purpose was defined by our maker, not by us. Yeah. It would be contradictory to make our own choices by ourselves. Because we don't know why we've been created. Yeah. Yeah. You see, because I'm not my maker, own maker. If you make something, you know why. Why you made it. Yeah, why you made it. Like, for example, if you make this book, yeah. you know the longevity of this book, how long this book will last, what temperature it can hold, right? Will that be burned in fire or not, right? Yeah. Whether it's a fireproof or waterproof, you know, or any other proof. So you will realize that you are not, you are the maker, so you know it. Therefore, the creator was saying, I am, I am the creator and I know. I know what you what you feel, what you think, you know. And I created this life as a test. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then the test is to reward those who done good and punish the one who do bad. Yeah. And now that good and bad was defined. What is good and what is bad? Yeah. The greatest good is when you acknowledge your own maker. 
if imagine you imagine if you count the um, how many times you breathed since you were you born right it will be uncountable i don't think calculator would fit it yeah that disease will be run out right yeah. have we paid anything back for this oxygen free oxygen now just think about all the blessing of our life that are given free this life beautiful life everything was given free so what god wants does he want money flesh well everything exactly yeah. everything he has it he has provided it he doesn't need that he is the source provider of all those things so the gratitude should be in a way that he instructed us so that's why he sent prophets and messenger as a guide so that you can imitate yeah you can follow yeah otherwise if you don't have a guidance you would not know how to go home yeah yeah I'm sure you know the station, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which station you're gonna take? Yeah, you know, and then you reach home. Right? Similar way, our life has as a guidance as well. Yeah. So totality of our life. So God didn't just leave us alone without providing guidance. So He laid out all the details, guidance of everything. Quran goes and speak about how universe created, and also. Islam tells us how to clean our bum with water. Yeah. You know, we clean our bum with water. This is one of the part of cleanliness. Yeah. And many of the many of the converts actually say that when they become Muslim and when they clean with water, they feel first time they clean. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can you can experience it. Yeah. Now there are a lot of toilets. You know, they have, they have facility of water. You know. Yeah. And and Islam, we have high priority on uh, what you call it um, in cleanliness. Yeah. In fact, it is one of the part of the faith that you have to clean yourself. You know, five daily prayers. You have to have the hygiene before you pray. So yeah. we uh, we are being told to have udu, the state of purification. Wash your face. Wash your hand. Yeah, and and. Then once you are in a state, then you connect with the God. So, going back to the point, like when God communicated the message, um, the, uh, communicated with the message with the messenger, our duty is to check whether these messenger are credible. If they are yeah. credible, then is this message aligned with the previous messenger? If also been aligned, then therefore there is no option to reject the message. Yeah. Do you follow me? Yeah, yeah. yeah so Prophet Muhammad was came on the line of, so he is one of the descendant of Abraham. Okay. So yeah. he Abraham has two sons, Ishmael and Isaac. Yeah. So all of the all of the rest of the prophet came through Isaac, on the progeny of Isaac, and Prophet Muhammad came through the progeny of Ishmael, which is the other son of Abraham. Yeah. And God said, I'm going to fulfill. The promise of to uh, that given to Abraham because he will flourish Abraham's nation. Yeah. So the Prophet Muhammad, the last and final messenger, came to Arabia, uh, and he clarified the misconception about Jesus Christ. Because imagine, just think about it. People know that God revealed that Jesus Christ is a messenger of God. Now people are worshiping Jesus in Christ or following his message. Contradictory view. Do you think God would leave us alone with believing wrong things, or would you think God would clarify by sending another messenger? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, if Jesus is not the Messiah, then I think yeah, he would, he would. No, but when you say Messiah, do you mean like, do you mean is a savior or someone who healed and uh, someone who can cure people? There is a degree of distinction here. I mean, yeah. When I'm saying Messiah, I mean savior, as in yeah. yeah. Okay, the, so the Christian belief. Yeah, yeah, you know that term, a Messiah, anointed one, right? This has been applied for other people as well in the Bible. Like Cyrus was uh, also uh, in Isaiah forty-five, chapter forty-five. Cyrus was also mentioned as a Messiah. Okay, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, so so basically, anything you put to uh, or uh, uh, given it to Jesus does not make him divine, because you will find someone. Other messenger has been has that attribute. Like for example, someone would say, "Look, I I believe Jesus Christ is God because he born from Virgin Mary." I would say, 
Adam is more special than you because Adam said Adam was more yeah, yeah. exactly so um, do, you, do you believe that Jesus was resurrected so or what we no? believe is uh, he was taken in to the cross but he wasn't crucified or killed God has confirmed in the Quran that they neither killed him nor they crucified him and surely they did not kill him not the crucified him so what we are saying Allah has taken him alive he wasn't killed okay so he was crucified but he didn't no no not cross, crucified so nor killed both of them it doesn't apply so Allah taken him alive because God didn't let this happen to his mightiest messenger okay right yeah so therefore saying that Jesus died for our sin is not applicable even 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 for your own logic if you say he died for our sin you actually saying God is unjust Do you know how Jesus Christ is a, a, a not a sinner but you want to kill a non sinner to forgive the criminal what type of justice is this? do you see my point Imagine he's a, he's a, he's an innocent person and you are a sinner. And I said, I'm going to kill him to forgive you. Is guess, that justice? I guess in, in the Christian belief, that's kind of the ultimate show of God's love. That he's pinning all of human humanity's sin on his son. Because he loves us so much that he doesn't want to see us punished for that. Yeah. I mean, if, if God has the ability to forgive, he should forgive it. Why should he even take kill someone? Yeah, there is that. There is that. Do, do you see? Yeah. So yeah. if you truly love, you shouldn't hurt someone. But here, where we are saying, if you say this is love, I would say it's missing justice. God is not like someone who will follow one attribute of God, which is mercy, and he will forget another attribute. God is just and merciful, and all should be reconciled. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. We, yeah. Therefore, we say. Jesus didn't die, neither was killed, but Allah said, Bal Allah had taken him alive. Now, going back to why we need even crucifixion for that. The initially, the central the belief was uh, formulated in Islamic understanding, the original sin, right? Original sin that Adam eaten the fruits, yeah. and because of that, everybody have inherited sin with us. What we say it is that everyone born free means every children is a non-sinner. Means a children do not commit sin. They don't, they don't have that sin within themselves. Yeah. They are in a pure state. But we don't say, I mean, a children will have that instinctiveness of doing good and bad when they grow up. Yeah. But when they're born, they are not sinner. Therefore, someone doesn't need to die for our sin yeah. our sin accountability through our repentance a human being will commit sin yeah it is in the nature but God would forgive you through repentance like you you have to be sincere on repentance you know you, you feel remorse about that you feel bad about that then you make a promise not to do it again yeah and stick by your principle even if you do so again god knows your process yeah and he is ultimately of forgiving he knows your limit and boundary and weakness and we believe he is at tawab al ghafu so these are attribute of god of forgiveness and al afu so islamic concept goes in line with your rational faculties and if you evaluate even the jesus christ message you will find he is more of a muslim than a christian because Abraham was not believing this triune nature of God. Abraham came before, right? Yeah, yeah. Jesus came long after him, right? Abraham never believed triune God. In that way, we, we are saying, okay, God revealed one information to all of the message, messenger, and he given another information to Jesus Christ, a two different information, which is contradictory, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's if, if we believe Jesus Christ was hmm. not 
of God because mm. obviously the Christian believes that Jesus is mm. God himself in human form mm. so God himself like for example if we define God God must be all-knowing do you agree yeah yeah so when Jesus Christ was asked about when is the hour in the Bible he said no one knows not the son not the angel only the father in the heaven so he clearly distinguished himself he is not all knowing mm. when you pray to someone imagine you are praying to someone do you think a god pray to god doesn't no, make sense no, yeah, no, so therefore look if you analyze jesus christ in the bible you will find him he is not all knowing he is not all powerful he need help he was praying you know in the garden of gethsemane he fell on his play, uh, uh, face and he saying let the cup pass away from me means take the obstacle away from me yeah. they are going to kill me right yeah. so that shows he is need of help and a creation need of help creator he provides help he doesn't need help yeah yeah no no that makes sense yeah Logically. so in that sense then now where can we put jesus christ now he's not god now and he's not an ordinary human being as well because ordinary human being cannot produce miracle then where can we put him what is the identification now we look look at the jesus message what did he say what is the first commandment only one god yeah and what was the message of all the prophet worship god alone Yeah. Then all the prophets and messenger confirm that they are Muslim, means someone who submit to God, and this is Islam. Prophet Muhammad, the last and final one, who confirmed what happened, and he mentioned in one of the hadiths which is teaching, he said, uh, in one point, the companion of Prophet Muhammad was over praising him, and he said, "Don't over praise me." And you know why he said something very special he said do not overpraise me as they done with jesus christ the son of mary and they make him messenger to god so sometimes you know and and it it goes in line with uh, many uh, um, many christians also said that you know even bartarman said the christology has been developed means jesus was understood by purely human some people believed he is half man half divine some people believe fully divine but in the council of nicaea 300 years later on which has been decided the council decided and they go for minority to decided what is the belief we should hold for jesus christ so god did not leave this up to the council god sent another messenger right. to make sure that we receive that uh, uh, the correct guidance does it make sense yeah i think so i think so where where are you are you stuck so um okay i'm not stuck on many things i'm just thinking as well is there yeah. is a lot to think about yeah um also the, the one i'm stumbling on a little bit you know you said um jesus wasn't crucified mm. i thought there was historical evidence that he was yeah he was so crucified. there are there yeah there are uh, evidences we find uh, a, a group called basilides a group called basilides you can look it up they also believe he wasn't crucified there are also apocrypha book apocrypha which not canonized means which didn't get it into the new testament also mention that if i'm not mistaken uh, i think i think gospel of saint barnabas if i'm not mistaken right mention that he wasn't crucified that someone else replaced him so there are also historical narrative say that he wasn't crucified okay so it says whichever one we believe is this evidence on for and against it now question is all of the books we have new testament yeah can we trust them as a credible source this is the big question yeah because yeah. none of the writers we do, we don't know who they are nobody knows actually who mark is matthew luke and john these are uh, 
eyewitness and ear witness. Yeah. We don't know the biography of Mark. I mean, if you follow a book, you must know the author of the book. Yeah. If you if you don't know who's the author of the book, then it's very difficult whether to trust the book or not. Yeah. Um, so I. This isn't sort of, uh, I don't want this to seem disrespectful anyway, but no. how do we know we can trust uh, the word of Muhammad and not the word of those okay. guys? Okay, so the basically, um, in Islam, we have something amazing, which is called Quran, which is only unique book on the face of the planet, which has been memorized by millions. And we have a, a special school. Uh, called Hifz Madrasa, which is a special type of school every Muslim country to facilitate the memorization of the book. For example, if you go to like any Muslim country, even if you go to like to a mile and a half from here, Al Mizan School, which is dedicated for memorization of the book, Quran. And Prophet Muhammad, when he memo received the revelation, he memorized it and he recited to his companion. Then ask a companion to recite back to me. Then when he heard, and then he give permission to them, go and teach the way I taught you. From these traditional words, till today. Now, till today, the Quran is preserved. Now let's do a test, right? Let's do a test. Me and you, we pick 15 children from different parts of the world. 15 children. One from Africa. One from Zimbabwe, one from my country, Bangladesh, one from Korea, one from New Zealand, one from Australia. Did I miss any continent? Um, Europe, I think. Europe. Okay, let's take. And we have yeah. five, 15 ch children. Put them in a 15 different room. And we'll place a tape recorder. We play them and ask them to recite full Quran. And none of them seen, no one. So we make them separate so that nobody seen, no one, nobody hear, no one. And we record the full conversation. When you play together, you'll find exact letter by letter the same recitation. What does that prove? There was only one Quran. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said this is an objective proof and challenge that this book has been preserved. God himself said, I will make sure this book is preserved. Allah said, inna nahnu nazzalna zikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. That indeed, I have revealed, we have revealed this book and we will be take care of this book. Means he will preserve it. So, the Quranic preservation is one of the miracles. How come a book has been preserved? Now, imagine if you go to Bangladesh. We don't speak Arabic. But you will find children, five, six, uh, seven year, eight year, nine year old children, they memorize cover to cover. In but Arabic. If you, in Arabic. Yeah. And, but if you ask them, tell me, um, how do you say, how are you in Arabic? You will say, I don't know. Yeah. But yet he memorized the book. And this is actually said in the Quran. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِذِكْرِ فَهَلْمٍ مُدَّكِرٍ I have made Quran easy for remembrance or memorization. Is it, is it rhyme? Is it, is so, it in rhyme? I, I, someone's told me that before. No, it's, it's not poetry nor the prose. It has its own genre. Yeah. It has its own genre. It has... So, the Quran also plays some objective challenges. And when I say objective challenges, I want my brother to include that into the conversation, right? The book claims to be Word of God. The Word of God means someone... The way should be written it should not be like human being do you agree it should be godly delivery as well do you agree i mean to an extent i think also now if someone is say this is the verbatim word of god literal word of god yeah that must be distinct and special compared to human writing do you agree yeah i think a human yeah. should not be able to exactly come up with so that. whenever we read a god's book we can clearly connect this is not from human being and it is from god do you agree yeah, yeah. That yeah, should be objective yeah. challenge. Now, Quran said, "Wa inna hu la tanzilu Rabbil Alamin, nazala bihi ruhu al-Amin, ala qalbika li takuna min al-Muzrik." This is the revelation from the Master of this universe upon the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam through the angel Gabriel. 
So Quran defined how it coming to Prophet Muhammad. So it make the claim. So he, so he, the Quran makes the claim. The Quran through the angel. Angel. Okay. And then he memorized it. So Quran is telling its process, how it came to this earth, to the Prophet, and the angel bring the Quran down to Prophet Muhammad. Then Prophet, you know, he recited, memorized it. Now, if you look at the challenge, Quran made some challenges, many types of challenges. Some challenges are like, can you create a fly? Or if a fly snatch a food from you, can you retrieve it back from the fly? These are the challenges. Another challenge is that find some contradiction in it. Because God would not contain contradiction in it. If there is a contradiction, it's not from God. So Quran challenge that you would not be able to find a contradiction in it. Means in one place some saying something which contradicts in another place. No. Quran is free from error, free from mistake, free from contradiction. So this is a challenge there. 14th century onwards, there are people who bring challenges, but whenever we evaluate, it's not a challenge. It's not an error or contradiction. Then there is another challenge. One of the biggest challenges, which is produce a chapter like it. Allah saying, this is a book I revealed. If you think this book is other than God, then you do it. Kind of thing. Do it. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So the book making a claim is from God. Then if you think that Muhammad wasalam, has made the book, then of course all the intellectual people can sit down and make it. Of course one brain is, uh, sorry, ten brain is better than one brain. Yeah. So on that condition you can make even better. That cannot, no one can imitate it even. Right? So the smallest chapter is three line, which is Surah Al-Kawsar. Right? So, so this is the smallest chapter. And this the challenge has been given. People try to imitate it and they become laughing stock. Till to this date, its challenge is there. And hundreds of, a lot of Muslims, a lot of non-Muslims become Muslim looking at this challenge. It's still there. You can objectively, it's not like something subjective, it's objective challenge. You can look it up, produce a chapter like it. Now let me make it in simple language, how should the challenge is, what is the challenge? I'll give you 10 brick to make a building. I'll give you 10 brick and I'm claiming to, God forgive me, just for example, I'm saying I'm a communicator of God or messenger of God. Yeah. And we all have 10 equal same type of brick. You, I made a building has, let's say, I have some amazing feature in, in it within this 10 brick. You make a building. Maybe you cannot produce something special, normal building. And you make a normal building. And I have extraordinary building and it cannot be in compare yeah. right now what is this example tell us that I have something special now if you all together get together all the world's people and we give 10 brick each of them they cannot even imitate my building that means I have something special. So similarly, it's not a good analogy, but I've tried my best to no, give no, a yeah, scenario. So Quran objectively challenged to the total humanity because the book is talking with authority, is telling you that heaven and hell, talking about prophet, prophets and messenger was sent for guiding people towards God. It was explaining how to have relationship with our family it explaining all the rules you know and islam comes with protection of human being islam comes to protection of religion islam comes to protection of your intellect do you know how no, telling you to eat good food and telling you not to drink alcohol so islam prohibited thing that will be detrimental for your health a court will not take your testimony if you drink. So Islam preserved the intellect.
so you can think straight because you know when you are not in conscious mind you can make wrong decision yeah, yeah. right so that's why islam preserving your intellect islam is preserving your family do you know how by telling you to go to the uh, go and marry respect your wife in one point and another point islam telling you adultery and fornication are prohibited and there are punishment for that so that allah the creator making sure that all the tools are available to protect the family if you have the if you have the family protected then you will have a great nation if you don't have a family you have nothing family is the central point of a society and society would not function without family and a society without country a society there's no country so islam comes to preserve your intellect preserve your family life preserve your wealth how preserve your wealth by making sure that you you have legitimate business and at the same time is prohibiting interest based business interest is someone's exploiting your weakness instead giving an alt- not alternative complete opposite prescription which is called zakat means taking from rich giving it to poor so that the social balance can be done interest is other way around right yeah, yeah. yeah taking from the poor making more poorer poor and rich more richer look islam gives you totality of the package from start with rational level compelling evidence wise it provides why should be followed why it's a solution for humanity and name what you need everything in there it's up to you whether you chose it why because it comes with the consequence because allah talks about hellfire and you know one of the verses i recently read uh, allah said in the quran law kunna nasma'u aw na'kilu ma kunna fi ashab as-sa'ir the allah will ask the dweller of the hellfire why did you end up there do you know what they say they will say to allah that had we been listened or reasoned we would not be in that fire of the you know in, in the fire so that means the excuse will come out from people is that they did not use the intellect that given to us so we need to use the intellect like we do for every things we do in our life so allah is asking to engage our these faculties of reasoning thinking reading analyzing the claim of the prophets claims of the books why quran is miracle why islam is truth so quran has offered that all that for you my brothers let me give you a copy of the quran do you have any other question um i don't think so for now i don't think yeah. so right now i can exchange my number if you have any you know i can i can share you yeah okay, i can take you yeah, yeah, let, yeah let, 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 let me give you a copy of the quran as well is something amazing you know um, you. make sure you it to try you know and um, you know let me yeah i know it's a long but it was it was nice discussion no no it's very interesting yeah the uh, uh Where's always number where should i put it oh uh, at phone ah, okay yeah. cool thank you very much yeah. yeah drop me a message yeah if i have some questions oh, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah definitely because look it's is we we live in 21st century yeah because look jesus christ is a central part of our belief and that's why we like to engage with the christian to have a conversation yeah we yeah. should know why should we be fear about things no yeah yeah, yeah absolutely I'd, I'd you like see yeah because we don't believe that uh, belief is a mystery because in one point god's given you brain in another point do you think you will give a belief that will not make sense you see it's contradictory with the notion so that's why we say quran you will find that constantly urging you to engage with the message is say la allakum yaqilun afala yashkurun afala yatadabbarun asking you to engage with the message Anyway, it was a pleasure talking to yeah. my brother. Look after yourself. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Look after yourself. Have a lovely evening.
hal um, long discussion uh, na lagard them to Islam so uh, very good brothers um, and and they listen to the message of Islam I hope Allah guide them to Islam and may Allah accept them uh, inshallah jazakallah khair assalamu alaikum